So meiosis is the process in which we generate four unique haploid gamete cells. Uh, so it's a very unique process. It's uh, different from mitosis, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to start with a cell that's 2n equals 4, just for the sake of simplicity in drawing out the chromosome. So we have two blue ones and two red ones, two from dad and two from mom. So we know that in interphase, uh, these chromosomes are replicating. So the DNA is going to be replicated. So let's draw that in. And these chromosomes are going to... Oh. These chromosomes are going to replicate Okay, so they've replicated now, but they're still loose. So it's not how we would see traditional chromosomes. This would be more considered like chromatin, okay? So interphase is the process or the stage in which DNA is going to be replicated in advance of meiosis. Okay, so now let's move on and talk about prophase. So prophase is the stage in which your DNA is going to condense and form these chromosomes that we're used to seeing. And your homologs are going to pair up. Okay, so homologs are DNA that code for the same genes, but they do not necessarily have the same alleles. Okay, so I'll indicate that here. So this would be a pair of homologs here, and these would also be a pair of homologs. I'll just write H here for homolog. Homologs. And prophase is also the stage in which crossing over occurs, okay? So remember that in meiosis, we're trying to generate genetic variation in our gametes. So this is one form in which we introduce that genetic variation here, okay? So crossing over, crossing over, it's going to occur here. So let's just make that a little bit more clear here and a little bit more visual. So these guys are going to exchange. And the same thing will happen with our smaller chromosomes here. They're also going to cross over. Okay. So remember that crossing over is a way in which we induce, introduce genetic variation to uh, the population. Okay. So now let's move into metaphase. So metaphase is the point at which our uh, homologs that have been paired up are going to line up at the equator of the cell in preparation to be separated. Okay, so I've got them lined up here. So uh, one maternal chromosome here and one maternal chromosome here and a paternal one here and another paternal one here. Well. With the law of independent assortment, we know that the homologs are randomly distributed to daughter cells and segregate independently of each other. So this means that how one set of chromosomes separate is independent of how another set chromosome will separate. And I'm going to indicate that by drawing another example here. Okay, so up here I'm just going to draw an example of how the cell uh, might look like because chromosomes segregate uh, randomly or they assort uh, independently. Okay. But I wanted to use this segregation here where the maternal and the paternal for different homologs are on the same side. 
because I wanted to illustrate the fact that not all your paternal chromosomes and not all your maternal chromosomes will end up on the same side of the equator. So we'll use this one to continue moving on to uh, anaphase. So here is anaphase. So anaphase is the stage in which homologs are going to be pulled apart to opposite poles of the cell. We call this anaphase one because we're still in meiosis one. So we have our homologs, which they were paired, and now they're being separated. So remember that in anaphase one, this is the separation of homologs, okay? not the separation of sister chromatids, which happens in meiosis two. Okay, so these guys are gonna get pulled apart. They're gonna get pulled to opposite ends of the cell. Okay, so let's look at the next stage. So we're pulling these uh, chromosomes apart here, and we're now got two daughter cells with the ploidy that's been halved already. So we have one maternal chromosome and one paternal uh, chrom uh, smaller chromosome. And the paternal large chromosome and the maternal small chromosome. Okay, and you can see that the crossing over has already happened here. Okay, if I zoomed in here, you can see. So that is the end of meiosis one. And of course you have telophase inside of kinesis, that's when uh, you know, the, the, the cleavage furrow happens and you actually get two new daughter cells and a nuclear membrane is starting to form. So now let's go into meiosis two. Okay. So we're starting to get our nuclear envelope breakdown and the centrosomes and spindle that I've indicated in purple here are starting to form again. So this is in the same uh, orientation as I had drawn previously. Okay, our chromosomes. So let's look at how they'll line up this time, okay? So we don't have homologous pairs of chromosomes anymore. So in metaphase two, the chromosomes will just line up uh, at the equator. There is no pairing, okay? There is no pairing in prophase two. And there's no pairing seen at the equator in uh, metaphase two. Okay, so they would they're lining up. The spindles are gonna attach. And in anaphase, anaphase two, we're separating the sister chromatids. Okay, as opposed to the separation of homologs in meiosis one. Okay, so sister chromatid separating. And now, at the end, when you get the telophase and cytokinesis 2, you're left with four unique haploid cells. Okay, so... So this is going to go into one cell here. So number one, one. These are going to go into another cell here. And you're going to end up with four unique haploid cells here. So I'll just indicate this. Okay, so you can see that meiosis 2 is actually very similar to mitosis. The ploidy having and the genetic variation all arises in meiosis 1. So let's look at our key takeaways here. As I mentioned before, the ploidy reduction happens in M1 due to the separation of the homologs. Okay, so after M1, we don't have homologous pairing anymore, we don't have homologous chromosomes. So in, in M1, that's when the homologs separate. In M2, the sister chromatids separate, okay. This is very different, keep that in mind. And genetic variation is brought on through independent assortment and also crossing over, okay. And now, after M1 and M2 are complete, we have four unique haploid cells, and that is meiosis.